Hello, so here, welcome to a new video tutorial. In this video, we are going to be working with NetApp object storage in the data fabric with storage grid. Let's get straight to it. Okay, a first exercise, create hybrid data fabric. In this exercise, uh, we are going to have the role of an IT architect. And basically, we have three sites, uh, data center one, data center two, data center three. Uh, our role as an IT architect, we have uh, to make sure that for the very first 90 days, we have uh, data as in replication mode. After the 90 day, from month four to month 12, we are going to perform an erasure coding for saving storage. And after one year, we are going to be moving those objects to an S3 bucket. Okay, so the first step we have to open the storage grid manager. Let's click on sign in. Uh, this warning is because uh, the current license is an evaluation license, but for our lab purposes, this is not going to affect us. Now we have to create the storage pool for those three DCs, three data centers. Let's go to ILM. No, just yes. then click on storage pools. Okay, so from here we are going to create the first uh, pool, which is going to be DC1 pool. The side we have to choose our data center one and click save. Let's repeat this process for the two other data centers. Click on create DC two dash pool for data center two. Click on create. DC3 dash pool site data center tree. Click on save. Okay, so here we can see our three DCs. And now we are going to create uh, the erasure coding pool. So let's click on create. The name of this pool is going to be EC-Pool Site. Let's select and data center one. Click here on Add. Data center two. Click on Add. Data center three. Okay, let's click on Save. And now we have to create a cloud storage pool. Click on create. Display name is going to be S3. Provider type is Amazon S3. Uh, the name of the bucket is demo. The protocol is going to be HTTPS. Uh, the host name is s3.demo.netapp.com. The port, uh, we can leave it uh, blank. It will take uh, the default one. URL style, auto detect as well. Um, let's scroll down. Authentication type, uh, we can choose access key. And for the access key, uh, let's take a look on the lab guide. And we have to copy the access key ID. Let's read off of the root. Yep, my AWS access key. The secret access key, let's uh, delete that one and copy and paste uh, the secret access key from the lab guide, which is my AWS secret key. For certificate validation, let's click on do not verify certificate. Okay, let's double check. 
Okay, looks good. Click on save. Uh, for the new username, let's click on done save. Okay, next step is set up a Azure coding for or a Azure coding pool, easy pool. So let's click on ILM, then Azure coding, and let's create a new EC profile. Click on create. The name of the profile will be EC2 plus one. Stretch pool, we have to choose easy pool. And for the scheme, we are going to choose two plus one. Let's click on save. And here we can see our new profile. Okay, next step, ILM rules. In this step, we are going to configure the rules uh, that determines where the object data is stored over time. So I'm bringing back uh, the lab guide. Basically, uh, for data center one, two, and three pools, we are going to keep the data as redundancy. Uh, from day 90 to day 360, we are going to keep the data uh, in the EC pool, or Azure coding pool, which, as you know, EC pool saves a lot of data. And from day 360 to forever, um, the objects will be stored in an S3 bucket. So from here we can see we have to go to ILM rules, then click create. Let's click here on create. The name of the rule is going to be data fabric rule. Description tree copy 90 day dash Azure copy sorry Azure code 90 to 360 day AWS copy after one year. Tenants, we can leave it as blank. Bucket name, let's click on equals demo. Click on save. And now let's take a look on the ingest time. From day zero for the ninety let's click on type and here we can add the pools DC one DC two DC three Click on refresh. Um, okay. And for copies, let's add a new copy and refresh here. Okay, now here we have the same view. Three copies, each of each of them in, will be stored on different pools. Okay, let's click on that. From day 90, I think, let me double check. Yep, to day 2070. Sorry, uh, from 2070. The type is going to be a Azure code. Here is the Azure code uh, pool EC2. Uh, let's click on refresh. Yep, it is there. Now let's click on add. Uh, from day 360, store forever. Type is going to be S3. Let's click on refresh. Copies, we can keep one as a fault. 
looks good. Let's click on next. For the ingest behavior, we are going to choose balance. Optimum ILM efficiency attempts this rule placement on ingest. Creates interim copies when that is not possible. Click on save. And here we can verify that the new rule is listed here, data fabric. Next step, create and activate new ILL, ILM policy. So let's go to policies, ILM, then policies. We are going to create proposed policy. Now the name of this policy is going to be a tree copy policy. Uh, reason for change and uh, data fabric policy. Select rules. Here we are going to choose uh, as default rule, uh, the one that comes uh, from default, and the other rules that is going to be evaluated before the, ref, uh, the default rule is the one that we just create, data fabric rule. Let's select it, click on apply. Then click on save, and here we can see it listed. Tree copy policy. Okay, let's just scroll down a little bit. Here we can simulate the data, so let's click on simulate. Uh, for uh, for simulating this uh, new ILM policy, let's take a look to the S3 bucket first. So let's open the S3 uh, bucket viewer. And here we can see that our bucket called demo already have an object called readme.txt file. So let's simulate um, this policy and with this particular object, let's put here um, the name of the bucket. Okay, let's put here, um, it's going to be demo, the name of the bucket, slash uh, readme.txt. Okay, let's click on simulate. Good, so this particular object, uh, uh, the rule that has match is the data fabric. Let's click on finish. And and now that we are done with the simulation, let's click on activate. Uh, here we have a warning. Errors in an ILM policy can cause irreparable data loss. Review and test the policy careful before activating. Are you sure you want to activate the proposed policy? Click on OK. Okay, so we can see now the status of this ILM policy is active. So, how can we validate that ingestion? Uh, for this exercise, we will be uploading a test file now. So, let's go back to the S3 bucket. Then click on Upload, Upload Files, and here we are going to choose, let's go to C Drive, and here you can see a test file that zip. So once I click on Test uh, on Open, open the file, we are going to see multiple uploads at the same time. Um, this is because it's being uploaded to the three different locations. That's DC1, DC2, DC3. Click on open. And here, as you saw, there were multiple uploads. So it is here. So let's minimize the S3 viewer. S3 browser, I mean. And from ILM, let's go to Object Metadata Lookup. 
here we are going to look for that particular new file. Uh, my bucket is demo slash test file dot zip. Click on look up. And here we can see all the information of this object, its size, a creation and modification time, S3, strings and uh, SHA 256 for security. And here we can see that the replica uh, replicated copies are living in three different nodes for each for from every data center, DC1, DC2, DC3. Okay. Uh, with this exercise, we can validate uh, the replication and we are done. Okay, next exercise, S3 object log for compliance. In this exercise, uh, we will be having the role of an storage admin for a company that has several applications that require the capability to log data to prevent deletion or modification. So the, secure, uh, the security admin requests that the data log be enforced by storage in order to meet legal requirements. So uh, let's expand again our storage grid. Now let's go to configuration, then S3 object log. Uh, this is the option that allow us uh, to enable S3 object lock. Let's click on enable, then apply. Once we are enabling S3 object lock, we won't be able to disable. So it's not a problem, click on OK. So now let's go to tenants and from here let's click on sign in. Here we have the storage grid tenant manager. Uh, the credentials have been profiled. Let's click on sign in. And from here uh, we can see overall information about this tenant, uh, about the storage consumption. Click on view buckets and here we can see our demo bucket. Now we have to create a new bucket that will be working as our lock bucket. Click on the new of this, the name of this new bucket is going to be demo lock. For region we can keep US East 1. Click on OK. I mean continue. And from here we have to enable S3 object lock. Once we select it, uh, ob uh, object versioning is also automatically selected. Click on create bucket. And here it is. Here we can see it with a check for S3 object lock. Let's go to S3 uh, bucket browser. And if I click on buckets, then refresh. Here we can see our new created bucket called them lock. Let's click on upload. We are going to upload in a file. The file that we will be uploading is readme.txt. And here you can see it. Now we are going to set uh, the AWS CLI to work with a storage grid. Uh, for this, we have to open uh, our Linux server, Linux one. Let's click on load, then open. Uh, credential is going to be root. Then NetApp one. Okay. So we will be executing the next commands. I am going to copy and paste it. Uh, this command is to check the server environments for AWS. Uh, here we can see it, uh, the AWS variables in, the, in this Linux system. 
next command is going to be uh, to reading the contents of the bucket. This is the command. Uh, here we can see um, the contents. That's only the readme file. Now, next command is going to configure the retention a retention policy for the object. I am going to copy and paste it. Oh. So this is the full command. Um, the flags in here is the, the name of the bucket, demo lock, the name of the object, and the retention that is going to be the name compliance. And we are going to retain this object to the year 2025. Let's hit enter. And let's review the output. Okay, let's submit it again. Here we can uh, display the information of that particular object. So this is the information that we just configured for 2025. So let's go back to the S3 uh, browser, select the object, click on delete. Are you sure you want to delete the file? Click on yes. Okay, so as we can see here, uh, the bucket is empty. This is the correct command. And here we can see the versions. So as we can see here is the latest. It is not because it was deleted. And here we can see for delete markers that uh, this particular object was deleted by this ID. And this is the object that was deleted, readme.txt. So let's, uh, from the S3 browser, let's click on versions. And here we can see all the information. So, Next step, let's click on the version deleted, click on delete, click on yes, and voila, automatically we can see the object back again. So as the versioning was enabled, if we click on here for the revision number one, and if we click on delete, and if we click yes, now we don't see a modification of the of the object. So if we go to event log, and we, here we can see that access the night. This is the expected behavior because of the S3 lock. Okay, we're done.